Marvel Studios certainly has seen better days. And with the Marvels flopping out the gate, multiple projects over the last couple of years suffering Rotten Tomato scores that are actually rotten, and a article that completely rips apart the MCU, one thing has become prominent in nerd culture. Now you all know what the line is, right? Say the line, Armin. Marvel is in shambles. Yay! Okay, so let's look at everything that's happened and why Marvel is in shambles now, opposed to any other time before. So remember, going into Phase 1, Marvel was already facing an uphill battle. Iron Man 1, with all those early previews, especially the leaks from the initial San Diego Comic-Con where they showed off an unfinished trailer, was seen as a complete disaster. Everybody wrote it off, but they showed that they can do it. Of course, it took Iron Man 1, the failure of the Incredible Hulk, the combo failure of the first Avenger and Thor, and of course the success of two Iron Man films which all led to the huge success of the Avengers to put them on the map. Phase 2, ups and downs all over the place, but again, they found some footing. Phase 3, same thing. Revisionist history though will tell you that they always found success and everybody believed in them, but we all know that's not the case. Doctor Strange, heavily criticized, especially upon release, for being a knockoff Iron Man, just with magic. Ant-Man was always seen as something that's never gonna work, and nobody's gonna see it. Let's not forget all the discourse about Guardians and how that was gonna be a huge failure. Age of Ultron suffered lower box office than the original Avengers, only by about 50 million, but that was enough to officially put the DCEU over, as the internet would convince everybody. But again, Marvel Studios fought back and found success. But at one point or another, each phase was seen as the downfall of Marvel. But ever since Avengers Endgame, things have been all over the place. Typically, a project comes out and it's seen and hailed as a success. The next one is typically seen as a failure. And it sort of has a up and down, back and forth game of tug of war. One is good, one is bad. One is good, one is bad. Maybe there's two that are good, but then there's one that's really horrific. And then you got some outliers there that aren't complete garbage, but they're also not outstanding. They're just kind of middle of the road. It's been a weird two phases, to say the least. Which, of course, brings me to all the controversy Marvel Studios has faced. Jonathan Major's controversy, a big problem for everything in the MCU, just like the Ezra Miller situation with DC previously. Or the ongoing Amber Heard situation. We, of course, have had all sorts of announcements and all sorts of projects that have either been cancelled, that have been put on the back burner, that have been either entirely delayed indefinitely, and or seeing massive rewrites and structural restructuring, let's just put it that way. Again, it's all cause for concern. Now, of course, everybody wants to talk about Marvel Studios being in shambles. Are they in shambles? What exactly does this mean? What's all contributing to it? What factors go into this? What about the individual experiences for each project, individual people's opinions, the greater opinion, the collective, if you will? What's the consensus on projects? Again, that seems to be all over the place. And I definitely think that Phase 4 and 5 have been the most divisive. And certainly, if you look at how they laid out a timetable before, how long it was supposed to take to get through these projects, we're now way behind. Things are taking longer. And of course, multiple things got in the way. Whether it was an actors and writers strike, or the previously mentioned and very much real pandemic that's still having some effect. But let's not kid ourselves, people are acting as if Marvel is truly dead, like there is no recovery, right? That's what people want to say. But I personally don't understand that. Even if we look at something like The Eternals and Shang-Chi, which made around $450 million each, those films still performed as good as the first Captain America and as the first Thor, and way better than The Incredible Hulk, and right in the ballpark of other films on their first outing, whether it was Ant-Man or the first Doctor Strange. And remember, these were two of the first film once theaters opened up after the pandemic, especially Shang-Chi being the first big Disney film to pull this off, at least with the Marvel branding. So I don't think it's fair to say that it's all falling apart and in shambles, because if I look back on history, if I replace the word shambles with dead, Star Wars was dead on the forums in 1998 to 2000. It was dead from 2002 to 2006. It was dead from 2006 to 2012. It was dead from 2012 to 2015. 
and it's still dying now, but content continues to be released. Whether it's good or bad, up and down, there's still tons of content. The idea of Marvel Studios being in shambles seems like it's people saying that the brand is dead, but that's not true. Yes, they've had misfires. Quantumania, a misfire. But what was Guardians 3? A huge victory. The Marvels, a misfire. What was Thor 4? Despite my hatred for it, it was a huge success. The Eternals wasn't a winner when it comes to the critics or the fans, but Shang-Chi won everybody over by the look of it. Yeah, Secret Invasion's not that great, but people loved Loki. WandaVision did its thing, along with Spider-Man and Multiverse of Madness. And need I remind you, Multiverse of Madness made over $850 million, which is why I gotta bring some other franchises into this conversation. Let's look at other Hollywood releases. Is Mission Impossible and Tom Cruise in shambles? I don't think so. Is DC as a whole in shambles? Well, the Batman did good, but Black Adam didn't do so good. The Flash didn't do that good, and Shazam didn't do that good. Their CW shows went out on a record low whimper in terms of audience retention and views. So I don't think Marvel and or DC or anybody is truly in shambles. I think we are right now at a point where there's not just superhero fatigue, because that doesn't exist. There is content fatigue. How many people have you seen that are affected by the amount of content that comes out that they can't even catch up? For example... I finally, just last week, started Wednesday. That's how far behind I am on my watch list. And before that, I just watched The Haunting of Hill House. That's how far behind I am on watching things. And I don't watch newer things because I'm trying to catch up. In theaters, I am so backlogged with films that it's honestly ridiculous how much I'm going to have to watch in the next couple of months and just free up time during, well, the cold outside. What I'm trying to say is I personally don't think that there is superhero fatigue or even worse, the shambles have hit Marvel Studios and they're crumbling to the ground and there's no recovery. They just don't have a focus. And the focus is taking too long to get to because of, well, multiple problems that of course hit Marvel Studios and Disney, but also the entire industry. And one thing that's attributed to a lot of the shambles is the perceiving notion that I see that people have that they're not really building up to Avengers Endgame. But they are, but people just want Endgame right now. I recently watched a IGN video that's gotten a lot of traction and even a lot of comments that are like, you know what, I agree with you, the Marvel's not what it used to be, the video doesn't make any sense. They start by saying they need to deliver more Avengers Endgame moments and we need those moments constantly. Then they go on and say that you can't just force these moments and they need to take time to be established like phase one, two, and three. But then they say that it can't be done in the way that they're doing it and they should just rush to the next Avengers Endgame moment and brush it off and give the people what they want. You can't have it both ways. Do you want the next villain to be assembled across a bunch of properties or do you just want them to fight him for no reason? Again, which one is it? This is a major problem. I think people have forgotten how we got to Avengers Endgame and how long it took. It took 11 years to get to Endgame. It's going to take another 5 to 6 to get to where we're going with the giant, well, next meetup. Except in Marvel Studios' scenario, the projects are taking a lot longer... Because, guess what? Everything we just talked about. They're getting reshuffled. Things are getting cancelled. They're going back to the drawing board to try to improve projects. They're also looking at the bigger picture. They're also having to accommodate for delays that require reshoots because of slipping release dates and everything like that. Remember, by now, if the initial release dates kept being on track prior to the pandemic in 2019... Marvel Studios revealed that Phase 4 would consist of Black Widow, The Eternals, WandaVision, Loki, Hawkeye, Blade, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Shang-Chi, Multiverse of Madness, What If, Love and Thunder, and Fantastic Four was announced. And at the time this was announced, this was supposed to be only 2.5 years of content. 
but some of this we still don't have and to make things even crazier literally right after that they held d23 and they announced the next phase black panther 2 miss marvel moon knight she hulk sony announced a new spider-man film later that year which of course was no way home and then they teased that the following year we would get the rest of the phase announcements and the avengers 2020 didn't happen that didn't happen 2021 was rough so everything got delayed all of the things i just revealed to you that were announced were all set to release in a span of a max of 3.5 years two phases and of course everything was thrown literally into a giant jumbled mess of a pandemic and then once we got out of it most of these projects were not seeing the light of day yet not to mention they still mentioned they were working on deadpool 3 the additional avengers films and then they recently came out and announced those but here's the thing those were supposed to be bumped forward we should have already been seeing production for the Kang Dynasty, if everything went according to plan, in around the end of 2022, going into 2023. So everything would have been condensed, and we wouldn't have these giant gaps. But things got spread thin, and everything was thrown into a giant blender and spit out into random corners. And let me not even mention things I haven't even talked about that were in development. Armor Wars, Ironheart, I mean, Wonder Man, Daredevil Born Again, how many more shows are there? She-Hulk, you know, was so deep in that there was rumors that there could be more seasons. I mean, it's endless. It's literally endless. And they announced that more would be announced and we saw those trademarks, but that never officially made it to, um, well, the announcement stage. Just think about it. Think about how much content there was and now how we're still not even through the initial announcement of the original content from 2019. So, what I'm trying to say is, and sorry this is a longer video, Marvel in shambles is just a cool thing to say right now. Other franchises have been in shambles, but they recover. What we're looking at here is Marvel Studios, under the former CEO, had too much on their plate. They couldn't do it. The pandemic kind of threw a wrench into things, and now they have to figure things out, which is why they're downsizing spreading everything out more and making more events because that's how it goes that's what you need to do and that's what they're going to be doing so it's going to be interesting to see just how they get out of this but no i don't believe the marvel is in shambles narrative because i think it's kind of dumb